What's going on, guys? This is Dennison. I'm John. And this is the catch up. Welcome, welcome everyone to uh, the catch up. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> man, I can John, tell. Are you glad to be back, man? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to be back. I can tell you're glad to be back. Yeah, uh, it's nice to get back into the swing of things, man. You know, it's nice to like last week we had the episode, first episode of the year, but now it it really feels like we're back into our normal groove. You know. Mm -hmm. It is, man. It is. It feels great. It feels great. So uh, let's jump into things and start uh, catching up a little bit. Um, so what's been going on with your week, bro? Man, a lot. A lot. Um, and I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion here, but um, <laughs> I have been doing a whole bunch of stuff and there's been reasons for it. Um, I have, let's see, I shot a video. A music video, if you if you will, <laughs> it's it's very amateur, but I'm still very proud of it. Um, shot a music video of myself for this new song that I'm releasing tomorrow. So if you're listening to this, it's already out. <laughs> iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon. Um, <laughs> and it's it's called "Don't Let Me Go." It's by Yours Truly. It'll say John P. Smith on there. Um, but I was shooting this video because I applied for this event um that we have here in wichita it's called river fest um and it's it's a big deal man it's a big festival it's not just a music festival but music plays a big part in it um and i don't even remember i know there's over a hundred thousand people that come to this thing um which is cool like super exciting so i played it a couple of years ago with a friend of mine in a band um this year i wanted to do that but circum certain circumstances prevented me from applying as a band. So I threw this song together as a solo acoustic artist, put that out there. Um, and I will hear back in March. I believe it's going to take a little while for them to go through all the applicants, but um, I have high hopes. So I, I shot the video to submit with that to kind of help propel my application. Um, then you know, since I had done the song, I'm like, well, let me just put this out for people to to hear. Um, and so one, you know, uh, so it, it's it's actually an acoustic cover of my song, one of my songs I did on the first album, the EP that I put out. Golly, that was that was almost four years ago, man. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is. That's crazy. It was. Uh, I don't don't ask me how I know this, but it's February 10th, 2015. <laughs> I guess. You Never know. forget your first album, bro. Yeah, you're going to remember <laughs> that for sure. For sure. I'm definitely not going to remember this came out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it comes out uh, tomorrow. So it'll all be, already be out when you're listening to this. So yeah, people, they seem like they really gravitated towards this song. Don't let me go. Um, okay. Yeah. And then when I would play it live, when I played it acoustically, People would tell me, you know, hey, that was that was my favorite song that you did. Um, I had a couple people say that, and so that really meant a lot. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it really is. It's kind of a humbling feeling. So I was like, you know, I should probably just put this out. I think it will resonate well. Um, the only tough part is getting the word out, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm playing I mean, two gigs this weekend, and so I'll be able to get it out through there. But what what were you gonna say? I'm sorry. Oh, no, no worries. I was just going to say, I mean, it's always hard at first, but it's one of those things that uh, as you gain an audience and also as you gain uh, just more of a following in general, you end up uh, having like a, a better appreciation, I feel like. I feel like it's, it's one of those things that if you take the time and slowly grow yourself up uh, into that space you get a lot more of appreciation. And at the same time, uh, you see that stuff kind of grow and, and stuff like that. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you know, they, you always hear about 
top tier music artists talking about paying your dues and things like that. Um, and at the same time, I'm not the type of guy that wants to travel around in the in the beat up van with <laughs> eating, you know, just Chex Mix or something, <laughs> Doritos, because that's all we can afford. Like, I, that's not my goal. Um, but I do want to get to a certain level of stature where, you know, people recognize my music and look out for the music. And, and that'll come over time that. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a multi year process, but yeah, I'm playing two gigs this weekend: one on Friday, one on Saturday. So I'll be able to put it out through there. After that, I'm gonna kind of cool it on that end of things for a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll see how it goes. I hope people enjoy the acoustic version. They they seem to really like that stuff. Um, ironically, it seems like people gravitate towards the acoustic. Um, side of things more than the rock side of things, at least the people I've spoken to. Um, and, and, you know, to to be completely honest with you, I'm realizing more and more I do not like doing these solo acoustic shows. Um, <laughs> and How is that? Well, fun. It's, it's like I look back at it afterwards and say, wow, that was fun, but it's leading up to it. Like last week I was thinking about these I'm like, oh man, I'm so excited. This is going to be fun. And then as it's gotten closer, I get more and more nervous because <laughs> I'm, it's just me. It's just me and an acoustic guitar. I've talked about this before, I know. But um, but yeah, it's it's just you. You are the showman. And for some reason, it seems like with these solo shows, I get booked for longer time periods Um than I did in, when we were doing the full band stuff. And so like the Saturday gig, I have to play for two hours. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, I got to play for two hours, man. I put together a 20 song set list. Um, <laughs> and most of them are songs I played before, but I'm like, man, I got to do 20 songs, man. Oh, uh, um, not- yeah, you got to worry about that. Um, that, you know, one point single point failure that you got going on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, <clears throat> man, it, it's a lot um on the on the vocal cords, you know. It's that's what I have to mm-hmm. worry about and preserve because the guitar playing, that's I feel confident enough in that that's gonna happen. But anyway, so yeah, one more shameless plug. I got that <laughs> got that don't let me go <laughs> acoustic cover. <laughs> Coming out, it'll be out by the time you're hearing this. It's on Google Play, Amazon, iTunes, Spotify. Um, <clears throat> so all you have to do is search Don't Let Me Go, John P. Smith. It'll pop right up, I'm sure. So um, anyway, enough about me. What's been going on with you, man? Um, so for me, not much. It's really just been a lot of work stuff. Um, it's it's me getting in back into the work spirit and getting back into that work mindset. I'm also um, trying to get myself in a mindset of studying again. Oh yeah. Because I kind of took a break during the holidays of, uh, not studying and not really, you know, uh, getting, you know, taking those online classes that I told you about, uh, earlier. So it's me getting back into that groove, kind of getting back into a full groove of learning and growing and stuff like that. So that that's what's been mainly been going on. We got a new person at our at our work, which is pretty nice. So it's training him, which you know it's really interesting doing uh, training someone else on the stuff that you've been doing for quite a long time yeah. is interesting. Uh, if anything, it. it I don't know. I don't want to say it in a way that it sounds bad, but in some ways it kind of makes you understand how much you actually do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and and because you take so much of it for granted, like, you know, it just becomes part of the everyday task that you do every single time. But when you're actually teaching it to someone, you start to see like, oh, wow, I do this and this and this and this. Oh, wow, I know this and this and this. In some ways, it's kind of like a confidence builder in some ways because I I understand and realize that, hey, I know a lot. (laughs) Even though it seems like I don't know a lot, but I do know a lot. So 
you know, in some ways it's a confidence builder, but it's also uh, a nice way of me being able to understand like, hey, these are cool areas that I've already improved on so I can actually see my growth. But there's so much more that I can grow and um, push myself to go even further on. Sure. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. And that, you know, that's kind of always the goal, right, is to continue to to grow, um, you know, mm-hmm. but you know, I, it's funny you mentioned that because I've been going through the exact same thing at my job. Um, my co-producer, he, his last day was today actually. So he, he's gone, oh, wow. you know, and we, and you know, he and I have become pretty good friends over the course of the past couple of years. Um, and so the person I'm training is not necessarily going to be the new co-producer, but um, he, they are pawning him off to fill in for me on the overnight shift when I'm on vacation. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, that's why he's been there. Cause of course I'm going on vacation here in a couple of weeks. So he, mm-hmm. yeah, he's been training with us. Um, and yeah, just like you said, you realize, and, and I say this cause I think a lot of people can relate to this. Like you, you devalue, like we're our own worst critics, right? Um, Mm-hmm. Just like with me talking about playing solo acoustic gigs and being hard on myself. Um, we're our own worst critics when it comes to our jobs too. And so it, it's not until these moments where I'm training somebody else, I realize, you know what? I actually know a lot, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> and I'm actually very qualified to do this job. So it's, it's nice to uh, have those moments, but you also try to remember and value yourself more uh, outside of those moments as well, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so that's, you know, you're exactly right because you learned that you have so much to offer if anything. Um, and there's also so much more that you can offer people. Um, so it's, it's just a, in some ways it's a humbling as well as a rewarding experience to train someone else. Um, I feel like you kind of, it sounds kind of bad, but I feel like you kind of get the same kind of feeling when you are like looking for jobs because a lot of times you start looking at your resume or even just looking at things that you do and you want to, you know, uh, advertise yourself. Uh, You look at all the things that you do and you're like, oh, wow, I'm doing this and this and this and this. This is pretty cool. Yeah. I'm actually a lot farther along than I actually thought I was. So. You know, it's 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 an interesting and really cool uh, thing to look at. Uh, it's a nice reflection tool, and if you know, and then the spirit of new things and uh, a new year, reflection is really good. And that's kind of also the other thing that I've been trying to focus on uh, as this week has been going on, and just as time has been going on, is learning new ways to reinvent myself. Um, and, um, also building up personal relationships with people. Um, so that way I can be a better me. You sure. Know? Yeah. Trying to be the best version of yourself. So how, how are you trying to reinvent yourself? Explain that. Uh, so reinvention wise is more of, I want to be, as I told you last episode, it was, I want to be a little bit more outside of my box. So I want to get you know, I, I want to travel more. I think that's one of my bigger okay. goals. Um, because I, I can tell that when I travel, I see a lot more, uh, growth in my life, yeah. uh, mentally and spiritually, because I see so, uh, you know, a bigger perspective, you know, you, you travel and you go outside of your bubble, you go outside of your little niche that you're used to, you know, the, the Bob and Joe that you talk to (laughs) down the hall, you get out of, you get out of that and you're out there with amongst a whole group of different people who have completely different upbringings and backgrounds and everything. It's really, it's really amazing and really cool. And that was something that I remember when I was doing the online dating and stuff like that. Um, That was another amazing experience because yeah, I'm looking for someone who I would like to start a relationship with, but at the same time, I'm also meeting and learning about new 
people. You know, I'm, I'm learning and talking to different people who have completely different upbringings, completely different backgrounds than I have. And it's just an amazing feeling because it's like, it's interesting to know that you can find common grounds when someone is completely opposite than you. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, and it's like the old saying opposites attract. It's not necessarily true. Um, you, you know, no. you're not like, like you, you can't be completely opposites yeah. because you actually need to have something in common for the relationship to actually continue. Right. <laughs> Which is right. funny. But it's like you and I, like take you and I, for example, like we have a lot of commonalities, but then we have things that we're pretty opposite on, but we grow from those opposites. You know, we, we learn from each other. Exactly. And that's just a small example of what you're talking about, because the, the thing about travel is it's not just what you go and see and what you experience, but there's so much more than that. It's what you take back with you, realizing how fortunate you are, or in some cases, how much more there is out there to go and pursue. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, completely. I mean, what was it? Uh, two years back, I went on a mission mission trip to Panama, uh, up to like a, a little village up in the mountains. Uh, that was an amazing eye opening experience for me spiritually and, and mentally. I mean, I got to understand a whole different, uh, way of life that otherwise I wouldn't have known about. Sure. And I found out just how fortunate and how amazingly blessed I am as a person to just be living just, you know, in the country that I live in and to also be raised by the parents that I've been raised by uh, and everything like that. So it's, it really is traveling is one of those experiences that truly move you or I hope it should move you. I think it should always move you because if you look at it at, with an open mind, you're able to see a lot more. I feel like sometimes we get so caught up in our tourist bubble that we're so focused on sightseeing rather than actually indulging in the yeah. culture that we're immersing ourselves in. Um, so I think that's kind of one of my bigger things is, you know, travel and indulge in the culture and uh, let that help me grow as a person. Yeah. Because I think that's my main goal is to grow and be a little bit more social. I mean, I know my personality doesn't exactly fit that, but I want to be able to connect with people a little bit easier. So I, I know traveling and just meeting complete random strangers is going to help yeah. me with that. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's kind of my main reinvention there. And uh, through that, I'll, I'll learn and grow and you know, just become different. Man, I, I think that's a great <laughs> plan. And I can tell from talking to you and, and listening to this, you know, I can tell you're definitely set on growing and becoming the best version of you that you can in 2019. I think that's, that's great, you know, um, and, and becoming more sociable and, and all that kind of stuff. I can tell you that's a goal for me as well. I've always been, um, I'm not going to say I'm a social butterfly by any stretch, but you know, I have been a pretty <laughs> sociable guy. However, working overnight for so long now, it's easy to kind of get into a rut where you're not, you know, it's, it's easy to fall into a place because when, when you wake up, people are unwinding from their day and vice versa. It, um, and so it's not always easy to communicate with people. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's easy to fall into that rut where you don't be social. Um, and I think that plays a role into what you're talking about as well, as far as, um, diversifying and seeing what all is out there and, um, gain perspective on the world. Obviously, you know, you have to be social with other people mm -hmm. and it's not like social media or it's not like texting. It's about actually talking to them, whether it's on the phone or face to face. Um, I think that plays an important role in becoming that best version of yourself because through other people, I, I honestly believe that through other people, you learn more about yourself, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a firm believer, but of that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah. Oh, so I, I was just going to say, it's funny that you bring up the, uh, online dating thing <laughs> because that, that is you, you get a glimpse of the world around you in a very short 
uh, segment, you know, in a very, a very quick way. Oh, and yeah. it's not fair to judge a book by its cover. I mean, we've talked about this. That's basically what Bumble and Tinder and p- things like that are, is you're getting a book by their cover. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, people put out there what they want you to see. And, and I can say <laughs> it's very interesting to see what things some of these people choose for you to see first, you know? Um, Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. It kind of shows you what they value a little bit more. And some, yeah. Um, like, okay. So, so full disclosure, I've given Bumble a second shot the past couple days. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know. Oh, John just jumped back I, on I the jump bubble back. train. I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing, man. I'm buzzing in the beehive on Bumble right now. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna lie to you; it's going a lot better for me than it was the first time around. But, um, yeah, I kind of, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a much better place to partake in this. So, anyway, you know, you have people <laughs> that have like witty one-liners, or you know, that in their bio description. Or people that just seem really genuine, you know, you know, you and I are both very um, adamant about our faith. And so to see people say something similar right off the top, I mean, that's a, a big check mark for me. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have people that say, like, I saw this one girl, she was like, um, I am so tired of guys that play games. Only swipe right if you're serious. <laughs> I'm like... You sound like <laughs> a lot of trouble. <laughs> like I don't, I don't have time for that. Exactly. Yeah. You sound like a lot of drama. Exactly. There's a there's a subtle, you know, backstory to that one comment, that one yes. statement, and maybe a lot of baggage that you don't want to be a part of. You know. Exactly. And, and then and then there was this other girl. I gotta be honest. I felt bad for her, you know. Um, she said. Uh, she said, I just, or I'm, I, th- and this is the top of her bio. It says, I'm going through a divorce and am struggling with, uh, oh, it was, or and, and am dealing with, it was some sort of heart problem. Okay. I, I, for, I forget what it was, mm-hmm. but it was some sort of heart problem. And, uh, and mm-hmm. it says, looking for someone who can work through all of that with me. I'm thinking, <laughs> you need to work through that yourself, you know? <laughs> I don't mean to sound heartless. I mean Man. it like <laughs> cold hearted John. I'm just I'm just Bruce, being honest. Like how, how I'm getting off on this tangent, I know, but that's awfully selfish of someone to expect somebody else to drop what they're doing to deal with that. For someone who they don't even know, you know? Uh, I just No, I mean I, I I understand. I understand that. I mean it it is it's one of those things that you kind of should at some point work through yourself um, and not actually bring that into a relationship with yeah. someone else. Because if anything, I feel like a lot of you'll get into a relationship with this other person, right? So someone's going to feel like a yeah. nurse. <laughs> It sounds interesting, but I mean, someone's going to feel like a nurse because you're nursing someone else's feelings and emotions and baggage, and you're not actually growing in that relationship. Your relationship becomes that uh, nurse-patient mentality for their emotions rather than actually growing together as a couple and actually becoming... uh, you know, I don't know, getting to know each other, like actually knowing who this person is, because I feel like sometimes there are people who get into those types of relationships and I can't exactly speak from experience, but I feel like you, if you get into those types of relationships where there is a lot of baggage and there is a lot of problems, um, sometimes you, you continue to go through that. And then the moment that both of them are done with whatever problems that they had or anything like that, they, get like a sudden decline because they're confused as, because the main thing that was holding that relationship together, which was yeah. baggage, funny enough. Um, once that baggage is gone, what does that mean for the relationship? Because you never actually took the time to get to know that yep. other person. You were always getting to know that person's problems and not that actually, 
not the actual person. So, you know, that's kind of where we need to, I feel like we kind of need to understand that it's good for you to put that out there. So that way someone actually understands and knows what they're getting themselves into, but you need to understand that you shouldn't bring that into the relationship because it can create a toxic relationship yeah. later on. Yeah, exactly. And man, you may not be able to speak from experience on that, but I definitely can. And, and you are spot on with all of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, if you're going through things in your own life, don't get me wrong. You know, a, a significant other, a real significant other is there to go through those things in life with you. That's what commitment's all about. However, you can't formulate, you can't form something based off of your issues with somebody else. You know, that's, that's not a reasonable thing to ask of somebody in a, uh, in a relationship. Standpoint. No. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, I totally got off on a tangent. Yeah. I mean, you're completely right. No, I mean, it was a good tangent. It's a good tangent because, you know, I think it's these are good and meaningful conversations that I feel like sometimes we just as a generation, as people tend to pass by and not actually really think about it. We're so quick on the here and are so quick on like what's next, what's next, what's next that we don't focus on what's here and now and the actual meaningful conversations that need to happen. Yes, I know. And, and that's one thing I've always been thankful for you, uh, for Devon, for a couple of uh, our other friends that we have, you know, we have these real conversations on a regular basis. Um, and as far as you and I are concerned, you know, we've, we've always talked like this. So why not make a podcast based around it? Right. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we, we got a lot of topics exactly. we want to get into today. I think we should, um, we should take a oh, quick yeah. break, but when we come back, we talked about CES last week, we're going to give an update on CES. I know Dennis, I already know Dennis has been keeping track of this, man. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, man. Yeah, there's tons and tons of stuff. I'm sure. So we'll, we'll some might bends, but tons of stuff. Really? Okay. All right. Well, we mm. will get into that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the NFL playoffs, and you know, we're getting we're inching closer to a Super Bowl halftime show, and uh, I don't think we have one set in stone yet. We'll talk about all that right after this break. We'll be right back. So, you know, last week we talked about CES, um, the Consumer Electronics Show. <laughs> I figured out that was what the S stands for, not showcase. <laughs> not showcase. Yeah, yeah show. just show. It's real simple. So um, anyway, so yeah, you know, um, I, it's still going on. Or today was the last day, I believe. Um, right? I, I yeah. believe oh, uh, so. It might be tomorrow. Well, I feel like there is yeah. one more day, but most of the coverage starts winding down yeah. around this time. So, so, you know, it's still not technically done by the time that we're recording this, but most of the major things have already been announced or demonstrated. So anyway, I know our local electronics reporter, Dennison Rice, has been following <laughs> the story closely. So Dennison, what can you tell us about the Consumer Electronics Show? Well, uh, John, <laughs> I'm here on the site of uh, CES, and it's uh, pretty amazing out here. There are so many... Uh, interesting <laughs> okay i can't do this yeah. anymore but uh, there's so many interesting things that are going on <laughs> um that are actually being displayed i mean as i said before uh on our last episode there are were a ton of brands tv brands that debuted 8k tvs i mean that was of course what was going to happen but uh one of the cooler things that i saw was actually not even an 8k tv it was a 4k tv um by lg and it was a you get this it's a rollable display wow so wow. <laughs> it's pretty interesting it's, so it's it's this big box, right? Yeah. And LG was going by the premise of like, you know, we're so trying to, people are now trying to get away from technology. They're trying to, you know, get, have the idea of technology always not being up in your face, but kind of like have like a, a hidden technology kind of deal. 
So LG's deal was with, uh, so it, it's a big giant square or more like a rectangle box. Uh, bigger than like a sound bar, but it's like a, it's like, think of like a normal sound bar, just bigger. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, can, and the TV rises out of that, out of that box and it's roll. What? And then when it comes, goes back down, it rolls itself into that little what? box, which is really cool. It's not super little, but I mean, this is like, uh, what is it? I think they said it was like a fifth. No, it's more like a 60 inch, um, rollable That's display. Huge. So yeah, it, it's really, really cool. So yeah, it, it rolls right out of the box, you know, and that box also is the uh, sound bar as well. So it's all of the speakers are firing directly at you, which is really wow. cool. Um, and wow. yeah, that display rolls right out and it's got like three settings. Um, so you've got fully, you know, closed. So where it just hides away and it disappears, you don't see the display. Uh, and then you have your second setting, which is fully up which is really cool. Okay. You get to see that awesome OLED, you know, crisp blacks, vibrant colors, all that. Um, and then the third is kind of like a, um, I'm trying to think, I call it like a notification mode because it's kind of like your notification bar that you have on your phone. So it goes down to probably, I don't know, maybe like 20% of the screen is showing at that point. And it shows you, you know, you, it'll go through pictures. If you wanted to just play music, you know, just use the TV as a music player at that okay. point, it'll pop up there. So you can see the track that you're, that you're um, currently playing and uh, a couple of other little bit of information. It's really wow. cool. Um, and it's kind of got like a little bit of a grayscale. So, you know, it's not doing the most with, you know, like super colors coming at you when you only have about 20% of the screen. It's really, oh, really Oh, so cool. it saves the screen, so, so to speak. Like, it ends up mm -hmm. saving it by doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and then you still have your screen there instead of it all the way being closed. So it's, it's, it's a really, really cool invention. And it's actually something, they actually showed this off last year as like a concept. Um, and it's really cool to see it now coming to like as a retail thing. Uh, they said that it's technically going to be released sometime this year. Wow. So I don't know when when that'll happen, but it is cool that that is coming to production. Granted, it's going to be insanely expensive, but, well, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is, yeah. right? It's I mean, it's not every day that you can buy a rollable display. <laughs> and this is coming from... This is coming from the same company that has a wallpaper TV. So wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like they're trying to reimagine what a television can be, you know. And and mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. like that. That's so crazy. It could be like a home assistant, you know, um, that you have with like mm -hmm. Amazon's Alexa or Google Home or whatever. Um, and yeah, and then and then it would just be your television, <laughs> um, which is wild. And then yeah. you can move it anywhere. You know, I know um, my parents and I like to sometimes take our TV out of the kitchen and put it on the back deck and just watch mm -hmm. TV outside. Well, what if you could roll your 60 foot television out, <laughs> out the door and then just have it pop up? I mean, that's that's crazy. That's definitely futuristic stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's really amazing to be honest. Well, so obviously this um, OLED uh, technology is similar to like what Samsung's talked about with their foldable phone, because you can manipulate the, uh, the screen into different mm -hmm. shapes, right? Like that's kind of the idea. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Samsung uses OLED panels as well. They call it AMOLED, but it's just another, it's a fancy way to call an OLED. <laughs> uh, it's a different way to call an OLED screen. So yeah, they use OLED displays all the okay. time. Um, and yes, it's the same type of technology. OLED's in an amazing uh, film-like uh, display deal uh, using really, really thin and very flexible um, LEDs. Uh, to get that really thin and cool effect. So, I mean, if you've ever seen like an OLED TV and you go to the side of it, it's just insanely thin. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And and you wouldn't think that they would be able to put all the things in there that they need to uh, to project something onto the screen. Um, it's kind of like that TV we we're talking about, which I did see that they unveiled this, the glass 
uh, television, you know, or yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and we're talking about how, how do they project stuff through there? Where do all the wires go? I don't know. I guess a, a magician yeah. never tells their secrets, you know? Mm-hmm. I did hear that it, it deals with uh, them punk punching holes, like tiny, tiny holes in the whole membrane of the uh, LED. So it's like you're, it's enough holes to where you can actually see through it, but it's not enough to where the LEDs, where you're getting patches of LEDs That's and crazy. stuff. If I'm not mistaken, it's it's that type of technology. I mean, of course, they haven't. That's not like full, um, the full logistics, but it's something similar to that, where it's like small micro holes are in there, so that way you can see through. But it's not enough to where you get patches to where you can't actually see the yeah, picture. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's wild though. That's right. And so mm-hmm. this rollable TV, will you be able to see through it? Is it see throughable? <laughs> No, <laughs> it is not. No, the rollable TV is just a normal OLED TV. It just okay. rolls. Okay. <laughs> it just rolls into its box and then rolls that's back out. Crazy. So that's still crazy. That's even crazy. That's honestly mm-hmm. even crazier to me because that means they have a different type of material on the back for the TV that will also roll up. That's mm-hmm. that's wild. Yeah, um, no, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So what else do you have? Uh, uh, so sadly, Samsung did not uh, announce its uh, S10, uh, nor did it actually give out too much information about its foldable display phone either. Really, which is really interesting. Yes, um, it actually they were talking more about their TVs. So there was that uh, Samsung TV that they were talking about that had the AI assistance to upscale. Uh, pictures to or any video or whatever to 8k okay uh so that is kind of cool um they kind of showed that tv off and showed its capabilities and stuff like that um so i mean if you're into gaming there's a actually a really cool thing um amd which is a graphics card company as well it's more like a uh, an overall graphics card and CPU company. Um, they have a couple of different CPUs as well as graphics cards. Graphics cards, if you don't know, they're used for rendering graphics. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, right. Just, I mean, it, uh, to make it easy. I mean, if you if you play video games or anything like that, uh, the better the graphics card, the better it can render objects and animations and stuff like that and get you smoother gameplay and stuff like that um if you is also if you're into graphics design uh the better the graphics card the better processing power that you have to uh render photos render videos render all sorts of things it's uh it's pretty cool and so uh they announced the their first seven nanometer uh, graphics card um and we kind of talked about this a, a few weeks back uh about seven seven nanometer processors oh yeah uh these processors are able to you know do insane things just because they're packing so many um transistors if i'm not mistaken into a super small space so it becomes super compact uh as well as super efficient and there's just a a lot more to it. So uh, it's supposed to be a lot more efficient, um, a lot more graphical power, and it's, it's going to be really cool. Cool. Um, Yeah. So that was, that was pretty darn interesting. Yeah, I thought for sure. I mean, that's one of those things that the average um, consumer doesn't necessarily see or, or perhaps understand until they actually see it implemented, you know, um, oh yeah, and, and so the oh, average yeah. person isn't doesn't necessarily know the um, details behind that, but it it makes just as big of a difference as anything else would. So, no, that's cool, man. And mm-hmm. we have heard a lot of talk about that over the years. I've seen a lot of mention of that. That it, that is a uh, disappointing on the part of Samsung <laughs> for for all of the rumors that have been circulating around those two things. It almost makes you wonder. If um, that battery technology that we talked about last week was not mm-hmm. ready to be released, you know, wasn't fully developed or something, something to that effect. 
I think in some ways, maybe, but I think what's going on, because they actually announced, uh, actually today, if I'm not mistaken, that they are going to they're going to have their own press conference, uh, kind of like what Apple does. Usually they have their own press conference. Yeah. So Samsung's going to have its own press conference in February where they're going to debut their S10. Oh, very cool. And I would imagine in there they would debut their S10 and then a couple of their other phones or their other things. Uh, a lot of tech companies have started to do this just because uh, the amount of the sheer amount of things that are coming out at CES, sometimes if you do like a phone announcement or anything like that, your phone tends to get drowned out by everyone else. Oh, yeah, that's a good <laughs> by point. By everything that's else. That's a good point. So I think that might be one reason why they focus on their uh, their other uh, products that they have, their other tech products that they have. Sure. So they're like, Hey, let's focus on our TVs. Let's focus on, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, um, I think that was kind of what, uh, Samsung was trying to focus on. They were trying to focus on other products and they're like, Hey, we got our own press conference for phones. We have our own press conference for these and phone connected devices. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I understand that, uh, more in the quirky news for CES, there was, <laughs> you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. Okay. You'll never have to fold your laundry again because what? Hey, there's a laundry folding machine. Oh, heck yeah. Where do I sign yeah, up? Man. <laughs> Where do I sign up, man? Give, give me, give um, me on that roster. <laughs> yeah, man. I know. I know. Yeah. It did. Uh, very novelty, interesting device, but hey, yeah, you just put your clothes in there and it'll fold it for you. Really? And they just, just pull yeah. them out? Mm-hmm. Well, it uh, actually serves it to you on the bottom. <laughs> um, it's kind of interesting, yeah, because it just kind of like pops out like with the tray with your folded shirts and, and pants. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, so it's... It's interesting, but this, yeah, it's, this is a public service. Yeah. You know, this this is I think so. This is an opening in the market that needed to be filled for sure. Let me. Okay, how much does this thing cost though? I'm gonna say two ninety nine. <laughs> Actually, I don't think they even released a price, <laughs> which tells you it's gonna be expensive. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> I would be- think it'd be somewhere. Over a grand. Oh my god! So, oh my. No, I, I mean, I, I'll just buy more clothes, man. <laughs> like exactly. At that point. Gonna, yeah, if I'm not gonna fold them, I'll just buy new ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I mean, even crazier news. Uh, Hyundai, um, they debuted a concept of a walking car. I saw that. It's a very strange. It's like Star Wars all over again. It is. Uh, it is like Star Wars. <laughs> the AT-ATs are coming. That's what I said. But yeah, that. so yeah, it's it's a walking car. So you know, if you ever get to like treacherous things, um, obstacles or whatever, your car will just move yeah. for you. It's just gonna walk around stuff. It looks it's, like uh, uh, it looks like a mix between those AT-ATs from the old Star Wars movies, and then uh, um from lost in space <laughs> their vehicle oh, yeah. lost in space oh yeah. yeah and also some of those robots that we see from uh, boston dynamics yeah yeah it does um but yeah basically they were trying they were stepping into the market of uh, what of you know space technology really Mm-hmm. You know, they're trying to get get in early on space vehicles. And so that was kind of where this all took place, right? It was like a digital rendering of Mars or someplace like that to where it could climb over rocks and all this stuff. Uh, and you and your family could take a nice Sunday drive uh, through the Martian craters. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. You know, and sometimes, you know, maybe uh, get a little hike in there, too. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Your car will do all the way, all the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah, your you. car does all the hiking. <laughs> 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 That's a good point. That's a good point. If, yeah. <clears throat> just like going back to Bumble, you see those girls are like, I love to hike. Well, then come along in my walking car and we can go. Yeah, for exactly. I love to hike, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I also saw there was a, a an Alexa toilet there, an Amazon Alexa toilet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, CES is the wonderful place of 
creating technologies that we didn't need. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't. Like, would you, what you do, you'd be like, Alexa, flush. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, what do you say? I don't know. I don't, that's, yeah. that's weird. I mean, hey, there was a, uh, there was also a, a touch sensitive plank of wood. <laughs> what? The display on. <laughs> oh, no way. No, there is. Why would you want that? That just. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's called the uh, Mew. Uh, M U I. <laughs> what? It's gonna. It's starting its Kickstarter here. Okay. <laughs> or no, it was funded by Kickstarter, and it's gonna be. I don't know. You can buy it somewhere. I forgot that where, but yeah, sounds ridiculous. Um, it's very ridiculous. It looks like a. It's a pretty much like a two by four with yeah. um a display on it. It's a, it's <laughs> granted the display is like in the in the wood, so it looks like it's floating almost, like it's projecting on the wood. But yeah, and it, and you can touch it. I just typed it mm-hmm. in. It says uh, Mui or whatever. Uh, yeah, Mui's inter- internet connected block of wood is a minimalist's dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Imagine if you like use that for what if you use that for like um. A cross brace in your house's frame, <laughs> and then and then it became like a smart house because it was literally built into the wood. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's forward thinking right there. That's forward thinking. Mm-hmm. See, they knew what was going down. Man, that's that's crazy. You know, CES always has a wild arrangement, a, a, a vast array of things, man. Um. Oh yeah. So they they always, always does. Yeah, that's why it gets so much press is partly because it's it it talks about what's going to come in the future and then it talks about just some wild and crazy stuff. <laughs> wild mm-hmm. and crazy mm-hmm. things. I don't know if I'm going to yeah, I mean or go ahead. <laughs> well, I I don't know if I'm going to be like, you know, mounting my a smart plank of wood and then go in uh, to relieve, <laughs> relieve myself on my Amazon Alexa enabled toilet. Um, yeah. And then when you're watching, washing your hands, you can also talk to Google assistant in the mirror as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily that's, need that's that. the future I want to live in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm literally always talking to a robot. <laughs> I'm talking to a robot more than I'm talking to my own family at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Honestly, it's 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 pretty great. I mean, uh, just to close us out <laughs> um, on our CES coverage, uh, Royale, um, that company that we talked about, mm, man, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, we actually got to see their phone in the flesh and oh, not yeah. in a grainy crappy video uh and <laughs> so there was a foldable dis- foldable display um at ces it just wasn't the one that we were hoping for oh okay uh, gotcha. it, it it looks interesting um it looks like i don't know it doesn't look as you would want it to oh okay i think it's kind of a letdown mm-hmm. kind of i mean it looks almost like like I had a normal tablet and then I bent it, but for some strange reason, it didn't, it didn't break. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it just stayed so, permanently I mean, the screen, bent. Yeah. I mean, the screen is, you know, wrapped around all the way. So it looks kind of cool, but I don't know. I guess it just looks very first gen. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the best way to describe it. Which it is. Yeah. I mean, that, they were kind of off to a bad start from the get go because you're talking about the future of cell phone technology and then you release it in a, a video that looks like it was shot in 1947. Like <laughs> it's oh yeah, not going to go very well. <laughs> it's not a good sign. Um, but yeah, no, well, that's too bad, man. But like you said, you know, Samsung, they'll, they'll release their heavy hitters here in a few weeks. So it'll be interesting to see mm-hmm. all that, but yeah, man. Um, well, you know what? That's a good CES wrap up. Um, thanks to our, uh, consumer electronics reporter, Dennis and rice for that one. <laughs> We're going to send it back to the studio here real quick. But before we do, 
We're going <laughs> to take a break. We'll come right back. We'll talk about the uh, playoffs, Super Bowl halftime show, and we'll be right back. All right, so obviously we're in the middle of the NFL playoffs. There's a lot of excitement going on right now, really in both places that you and I live, um, because we have the Chiefs up here, which have been kind of regarded as the best team in football, even though they, I'm not going to say they've fallen off, but they kind of lost a little bit of what they've had in recent weeks. I mean, obviously you and I have talked about uh, Kareem Hunt and the issue that went on there with him getting on camera and, and kicking that girl. Um, but he still had, yeah. yeah. And that's not, that's not okay, obviously, <laughs> but, um, mm-hmm. but the chiefs have still had good running backs and they still had good games. Um, I'd still say they're the favorites for the super bowl right now, but um, you know, interesting enough, of course, I mean, they did get beat by the Patriots. They did. um, But, you know, the Patriots have lost some pretty winnable games as well. Um, So I don't know. You know, it's really I I don't think any of the teams left are without a blunder of some sort, you know, because they all they've all had them. Um, That is true. And so. Yeah, uh, it, it will be interesting to watch. But the thing is, you know, it's always funny to me when Chiefs fans make fun of the Cowboys. Cause obviously I'm an avid Cowboy fan. Um, and I always will be, <laughs> but the thing is, you know, they don't, they, they like to give me crap about the, um, the Cowboys not having won a playoff game too often. Now they did just the other night, they won their third playoff game in the past 23 years, but the <laughs> chiefs have only won one playoff game in the past 20 years. And you know, the last time the chiefs were in the super bowl, man. Oh man. It's been a long time. 1969. <laughs> At least that's what, that's what I was told anyway. And so, um, the, yeah, uh, they have not been there for 50 years. Um, or at least that was the last one they won. I can say that, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, and the Cowboys won one in 95. So it's, uh, there's a lot of excitement in both areas of the country that we live in right now. Obviously me in Kansas, you in, in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and while, while at this point, we obviously don't know what the outcome is going to be of the, uh, Saturday and Sunday games, by the time this comes out, um, it's been a lot of fun. I, I, at, my station on the morning show, we've been doing football picks that we've been putting on air and uh, I downloaded a, a beat because I found out <laughs> and man, I've done, I've done some crazy stuff with this, but I found out that we have access to this whole music library of uh, instrumentals and all this stuff. And I've been going wild since I found that out, just oh adding gosh. all kinds of things to it, man. <laughs> yeah. Like I made like, I don't know. There, there's been all sorts of stuff, but regardless, um, I got, I got this one that was really cool for a uh, football picks. And it just sounds like you're watching sports center or something like that. So we've been doing that. We've been having fun with it on air and behind the scenes. Um, but you know, obviously the big game uh, is coming up. Yes, the uh, yeah. the Super Bowl. <laughs> the Super Bowl. <laughs> Super and you know, Bowl. well, legally, okay, so legally, being that the the big game air quote is not being broadcast on NBC, uh, we have to refer to it as the big game. Otherwise, the NFL could sue us. <laughs> really, it's yeah, called the big game. That that's that's it's called really... the big game. That's really sad. That's why any time you hear it called the big game, that's why is because they don't want, or it's because of a lawsuit thing. <laughs> it's a legal thing. Otherwise, they would call it the Super Bowl. So anytime you hear on the radio or television, it's called the big game. That's why it's a legal thing. That's stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's what the NFL has designated. You can call the game. <laughs> it's the big game. <laughs> the big game. It's, yeah, that's it's so that's dumb. um, it's kind of petty. I feel like. I mean, that's just yeah. just like when the guy copyrighted the Happy Birthday song. Like seriously, <laughs> right? It's like how you ain't gonna keep me from singing Happy Birthday, man. Yeah, I'm, gonna, like, I'm gonna tell you right now. You're gonna sue everybody. <laughs> 
Yeah, what, what are you going to do? Like, I'm still going to sing happy birthday. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> no, okay. So, I mean, and, and before, that flows perfectly into what I want to talk about with this, with the NFL being stingy. But there is something else I want to talk about uh, real quick. It's the fact that you're an Eagles fan. <laughs> and, what? Uh, what? I mean, like, first of all, I'm not trying to have an intervention on the podcast. I am just trying <laughs> to say... <laughs> I am, I am just trying to point out, however, that the Cowboys and the Eagles could meet in the NFC Championship game. Yes, that would be pretty cool. I think so. What? What it though? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Because the thing is, Eagles haven't done great against the Cowboys. Um, and... I think they, they, especially if they were in the big arena, you know, the, the big game, they were at the big game um, together. I feel <laughs> like they would bring a lot of, they, I think they would bring a lot of heat because there would be a lot of am- animosity there. Like, you know, we got beat so many times. We're not going to beat again. Uh, you know, we right. are the reigning champs. Yeah. Are, technically. Yeah. yeah. No, no, they are. They are. And it's so weird how this season has, uh, been almost a mirror image of last season with um, the injuries and Nick Foles now starting and leading them on a charge last second to make it into the playoffs mm-hmm. and how and how they've been playing. Um, yeah, so they couldn't, you know, they may not be in the Super Bowl together because they're both in the NFC, but they would end up in the championship game together. It's very possible. Um, and, and I look at the Eagles similar to how I look at the Cowboys. The Cowboys can beat anyone. They proved it with beating the Saints. The Saints are probably uh, the second best team in football behind the Chiefs. Mm. Um, and the Cowboys shut them down. But it really just, you know, then just a couple of weeks later, they didn't score a single point against the Indianapolis Colts, you know? Um, so it, it, talking about the Cowboys. So yeah. it really just, it depends on which Cowboys team shows up. Um as to who who's going to win that game between the Rams this weekend and then the Eagles have the Saints. Um, so, Which, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like this whole season's been kind of weird stuff like that. This whole season's been really weird. Like, I feel it like has. a lot of teams haven't been really showing out that well. Like, you know, yeah. it's like they're slated to win and then they lose instantly. Like, what happened? Yeah. Like they just, yeah. I don't know, they just lose it. So yeah, this whole team or this whole, if anything, it's kind of, it almost felt like it's been putting this uh, whole season in kind of like a lottery thing. Like who's going to win today? <laughs> right. Um, exactly. Which makes it, you know, better football because you don't really go into it thinking there's no way you can really go into it thinking like, oh man, well, they're going to, this team's going to win, of course, because it could easily turn out not to be that way. So it kind of makes the playoffs yeah. even more interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean, that that goes into back to the topic at hand is a lot of people, you know, watch the Super Bowl. Uh, it seems to grow every year how many people watch the Super Bowl. Um, there is... The, the but people don't necessarily watch it for the game. Of course, they watch it for the commercials. Sometimes they watch it for the music. Um, and the music is really the interesting part this year. <laughs> um, oh yeah, be, because no one has actually declared who it is. Now, now we all think it's going to be Maroon Five because Maroon Five has been talked about for so long. But here's the thing. Normally, the NFL declares who uh, who is performing the Super Bowl halftime show no later than November, and we're almost halfway through January. I mean, we're we're almost into the second round of the playoffs, <laughs> and there's still been no official declaration as to who is performing. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. I mean, and it's also interesting that um, it seems to be like a lot of artists have turned down the the ability to be in the Super Bowl as of late. Yes. And there's a reason for that. And I think a lot of people may not know this. It's kind of been swept under the rug, but as of a couple of years ago, and I want to, I want to say that it was um, 2015 or wh- whenever Katy Perry performed, I believe she was the first one to perform and not get paid for it. 
Um, the NFL recently changed their policy where they don't pay performers at the Super Bowl anymore. Um, which is mind blowing because we're talking about the National Football League here. And there's no reason, there is no reason for uh, an organization of their stature to not pay out for an event like that. And, oh, yeah. And you talk about any other event anywhere near that size. I, I, I'm not a fan of Coachella, but Coachella attracts a large amount of people. Every mm-hmm. single one of those acts gets paid by Coachella to perform. And the NFL's argument is that the album sales and, and concert ticket sales that you would generate from the publicity you receive on the halftime show is payment enough and that they're really doing the artist a service by allowing them to perform on the Super Bowl halftime show. That is a ridiculous way of thinking to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and what artist in their right mind, I, I think what you would have happen is you would have uh, eventually over time. Now, of course, we've had Katy Perry. We've had Justin Timberlake, Bruno Mars, um, people like that in, in recent years. But it seems to me like what you're going to end up having happen are artists that are more up and coming rather than those that are established or artists who have had a bad reputation as of late and need public good publicity. Um, because for those who are established, what, what incentive would they have to play the Super Bowl? You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, at that point, I mean, you know, you're not getting paid. Yeah. Your record sales are going to be higher, but I mean, if you're already in a good position, record sales aren't that big. They're not going to push you into the limelight. I mean, you're already doing concerts and you're probably already, um, you know, selling out shows. So, I mean, what, you're going to make your shows sell out even more? <laughs> yeah, It doesn't really help you out. So no. payment there is is uh, a much... I feel like it's a requirement at that point oh, because yeah, people can say, Oh, you were honored enough that they picked you to, to play at the Super Bowl." But seriously, the honor isn't really that big of an honor. Like seriously, it's just like, Oh cool. They wanted me. If, if I'm anywhere of a, you know, decent artist, I'm probably going to eventually get asked to do the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's not as highly touted as it once was. Um, I know I don't want to sound like an old man with this, but I think it was more highly respected when you had people like, um, like the Rolling Stones or, or, uh, um, the who I remember the who played Paul McCartney, of course, just these legends, you know, playing the Super Bowl halftime show. Um, and then when they made the switch to more contemporary artists, I, I think it kind of, it helped what may have gained them in popularity. It hurt them in stature. If that makes any sense. Um, because it's not as legendary anymore to play the Super Bowl, but at the same time, it connected with the younger group of people because of the artists they were choosing. Um, so yeah, but, but yeah, and don't get me wrong. I see, I remember after every Super Bowl, you will see, these names at the top of the iTunes charts, their album sales would go up in the billboard charts and all that, but that's not where the majority of artists money comes from anymore. It's, it's from ticket sales. It's from concerts. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and then on top of that, these shows that are 20 minutes in nature. They put so much production value into these shows to make them elaborate and grandiose and, and a huge scale. And then they're not going to get paid for that. That's that makes it, that puts it at a point where, you're already at a loss and then the, re- not the rest of your shows, but a good portion of your shows for the rest of the year are going to be paying to recoup that make up for that loss, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's not, you're putting yourself in the hole by going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Or sorry, the big game. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's, let's keep it legal <laughs> around here. <laughs> so, so why does that make any sense? It doesn't. And I think that's kind of why we're in a spot right now where we don't know who, is playing the Super Bowl. It's been rumored and strongly rumored it'll be Maroon 5. Um, I just read that Travis Scott, the rapper, could be joining them. Don't know why. Uh, don't know what connection those two have. It's kind of an odd one. Um, 
And then I, I even just was scrolling just a couple of minutes ago. And I saw the Rolling Stones are potential guest at this Super Bowl halftime performance as well. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and I do, again, I don't know what connection Adam Levine has with uh, Mick Jagger, but um, well, <laughs> other than you know, oh, he the does have like that Jack- song. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I just hit me. I'm like, wait a minute. He's going to come out here singing moves like Jagger and then Mick Jagger is going to come out of nowhere and actually do the moves. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. So anyway, it's interesting. I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Um, you know, I guess we still have a couple weeks left <laughs> until the Super Bowl, but oh yeah, you know, most, most acts are already uh, practicing and preparing for it right now, you know? So Mm-hmm. I don't know. We may just have uh, four guys standing up on a stage with some lighting behind them <laughs> this year. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be. So, <laughs> welcome to the you know 2019 uh, halftime show where we do strobe lights. Yay! Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's gonna be something. It's gonna be something like that. I don't know. Hopefully, they can put a little more production value into it, but we we will see. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I guess we still have some time to figure out who's going to play the Super Bowl halftime show. I mean, it's not a lot of time, but um <laughs> you know, we're 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 in the middle of the playoffs, um and hopefully they can announce it soon. Um but it'll, it'll be an interesting thing to watch. It's just as interesting to watch as the playoffs, <laughs> you know, watching this drama unfold behind the scenes. Um as to That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's to, it's like the playoffs of the uh, Super Bowl halftime show. It really, it really <laughs> is, man. Yeah, and they they're cutting people out as they go. So, um but yeah, man. I, and you know what? Um I'm just thinking, you know, we're about to bounce out of here, of course, and um mm-hmm. but I need to uh I need to remind people we have the Facebook page live and it is the Ketchup Cast. Facebook.com slash the ketchup cast you'll see uh the ketchup with john and dennison um that is live we're sharing things on there all the time um and, you know n- mm-hmm. namely we're, we're sharing articles related to the topics we talked about the week before or that week of, exactly and, uh, you can find the links to the new episodes on there and, and we'll just continue to share more and more things as time goes on but uh yeah you you want to make sure to follow us on there we're doing good things and we want uh you know, we start off talking about how we can better ourselves in the new year. We want to continue to be able to do that with this podcast. Um, and so we're trying new things and hope, hoping we can reach out to more people. Um, and, and another way to do that, we say it every week, right? <laughs> um, like, rate, subscribe to the podcast. It just makes us more visible to other people. And, you know, if you like us, I mean, we, we like what we do. We feel confident about our product. Um, confident about our product, <laughs> if I can talk. <laughs> um, so we, you know, we want more people to be able to listen to it and see what they think, and we want to hear your opinion as well, right? Exactly, exactly, because your opinion matters to us. We really uh, want to make sure that we can, you know, deliver quality uh, content as well as continue to grow. I mean, you know, we as we talked about earlier in the show, um, we want to we're growing as people. We're also growing as hosts. So, you know, getting that feedback, that constructive criticism, or even just, you know, saying like, Hey, you're doing a good job or whatever like that, that helps us a lot. And it helps us move forward in a direction to where we make this show even better and better, uh, as we go on. Yes, exactly. So, um, but we want to thank all of you who do listen, especially those on a weekly basis. We really appreciate the love and support. Um, we're going to keep doing our thing. We'll come back with more topics next week. Um, and then the week after that, that's going to be an extra fun episode. Oh, yeah. Because we're going to be catching up in person. So you want to make sure that you stay tuned for that one. Um, but as for now, this has been The Catch Up, and we will see you all next time. Bye.